Hey, welcome back to day two of Plone Conference 2021. And I'm really excited to introduce Timo Stolenwerk, who will be giving our keynote today. He is a huge contributor to the community. We, he's basically the shoulders that we all ride on. Kit Concept is the driving force behind Volto. Um, Timo himself is a member of so many teams, it's almost hard to believe. Framework team, release team, the, the REST API team, and of course the Volto team. Uh, so definitely very experienced and we're very excited to have him give us a talk about Plone 6 and the state-of-the-art JS front end Volto. Timo, whenever you're ready. folks. Um, power is nothing without control. When I was a kid in the 80s, I started to play tennis and the way I was teach tennis was to try to hit the ball as close as, as hard as possible, as close as possible over the net, right? This was the way tennis was played. In today's modern tennis, everybody plays topspin, all the players and even like the, the youth players. Um, so when you hit a topspin, you basically slice over the ball. So you touch the ball longer to give you more control over the ball, right? Um, but when you learn topspin, your trainer will actually tell you to slow down at first, right? To have more control uh, and less power, right? So you sacrifice power to have more control. And in tennis and in most sports, it's all about the balance between power and control. And in technology, the ultimate power tool looks something like this, right? So in a remote control like this, you have all controls at your fingertips. And it's a perfect tool if you're a technician, right? And I'm pretty sure that this, remote, this particular remote control has been built by technicians, right? The problem here that is that this is actually a human to technology control, an interface, right? Uh, or has, built, has been built as that, but actually it's not, right? It's actually, uh, it's actually um, uh, yeah, a connection between a, a, a human user and technology. Um, so at this point, I usually um, showed like a CMS user interface um, that were, was built by developers for developers, right? There are plenty of examples, like usually I show typo three and you see a busy nineties like user interface, but to be honest, like today in 2021, it's an easy win, right? Because when you look at those traditional CMSs, um, they have something in common. Um, they have all have an outdated technology stack and a pretty old school user interface, right? They're kind of stuck in the past. And I had a look um, uh, and I did a bit of research before this, this talk. I look at Type 3, Joomla, Drupal, and they all ship with pretty old uh, versions and a pretty old technology stack. Some even have jQuery UI in there, which is like totally that, right? Um, and when you compare that, like Clone 5 does not look that bad after all, <laughs> to be honest, right? Because we have a far better user interface um, uh, still, uh, but we have, we have an outdated stack, right? So that would, that, that's an easy win. Um, but there's also an elephant in the room, right? Which is WordPress, because WordPress is the market leader in CMS. They have a market share of like 40% or sometimes even more, right? And WordPress is actually a pretty modern CMS, right? So they made the transition that we're about to make to a modern JavaScript uh, stack in the end of 2018, 2019 with WordPress um, 5. They released Gutenberg, a new uh, admin interface, as you will, right? So the, their back end is pretty modern. The front end is not that modern, but anyways. Um, so from the beginning, uh, when Gutenberg was published, uh, we looked at it both from a technical point of view and a UX point of view, right? And I have to admit, it's pretty impressive what they, what they did, um, uh, both technically and, and also from the UX part of, part of view, right? So it's, it's, not, it's not a bad product at all. Um, though one thing that, that there's one recurring theme when I try out WordPress every now and then or other CMSs, right? So I constantly have the feeling when I work with WordPress or some similar systems that I'm not smart enough for this, right? And I started, my first website in 10th grade, right? That was 1995. So I have 25 years of experience, most of it like professionally. And I have, I have a university degree in computer science, like comparable to a master degree. So, so I'm not like, I, I think I know a few things about web, right? But I still feel like an idiot when I operate those systems, right? And let me show you what I mean by that, right? 
So I usually set up a, a, a challenge for myself when I try out a new system. And I usually also screencast that to see like where I, where, where I had a problem, right? So the challenge is usually I, I take a regular page with some text and some images, right? So pretty standard, right? All CMSs should do that, even old school CMSs, right? So that's, that's not really, really a challenge here. The challenge here is to, to see how easy it is for a user. Um, and you can see here, like the page that I create. So images, you have an image uh, aligned left, image aligned right, right? I uploaded just the images that I have, always the same. And you see they differ, right? So I want to change the upper image, the left image to the same size as the right. So WordPress has this nice uh, way of that, that you can drag and drop basically the image, right? But I'm not a designer, I don't have an eye if they're really the same, right? So I check the settings there and they have a few like presets, right? So small image, a uh, large image, thumbnail. And I try around a bit with that, but none of them really fit, right? So, okay, there's a second setting, maybe, maybe that, right? Maybe 100%, maybe I can like toy around a bit and find the right setting. So I choose a bigger setting and then like 75%, but that still doesn't do, right? So, okay, there's a force setting actually. So a width and height, right? So I check the, old, the other image, 300 pixels wide, um, and I set that to 300 pixels. Oh, the aspect ratio is broken, right? So I have to check the width and the height of the image to actually make it look the same, right? Um, and if you're a web developer like, like myself, you will get through it, right? I mean, it's like, it's like CSS. Um, uh, and um, to, to, to further show you what I mean is, uh, let, let's go a bit simpler, right? I haven't shown you like a complex use case yet. Um, so the simple form, just text, right? So this is how, how text looks like in, in, in WordPress. So it's basically a, a word processor, right? You can do everything. You can set the, uh, you have a few, few presets like in Word. Um, you, can, uh, you can check the, you can set, set the pixel size. You can even uh, set the line height uh, here. So you can basically do anything from like seven pixels to like 300 pixels. And you can even choose the color. Right, so you can have something tiny that's that's maybe yellow, and something that's super huge uh, uh, in in red if you want to, right? And you have to have the option to do so. And the thing is, what WordPress is mimicking here is it's mimicking a word processor and an image manipulation problem, uh, program. Because what was missing in the previous example in the image was that you can, in an image manipulation program, you can actually set the aspect ratio to a fixed setting, and then it will automatically adapt, right? So they didn't go the full way. They're still missing something before it comes, becomes a full image manipulation program, right? Um, and that's, that's pretty impressive from a technical point of view, of course, right? But there's a problem here. Um, the regular user of a CMS and, and myself included, right? I'm not a designer. A designer knows about ty typography, about rhythm, about line heights and those kind of things, right? I know enough about design and typography to know that I can't do that myself, right? I know the theory, but when I try to actually like implement that, it doesn't look good, right? I'm just not an expert on that. Same is true with UX, right? Readability is really important of websites, right? And I know the theory, but I know enough to, know, to, to, to pass that to people that actually know that, right? That studied that. Um, the example that I show with the color chooser, right? Uh, modern websites needs to be accessible, right? There's legislation for that, that, that requires you to, for, for like government websites or public websites um, to be accessible, right? If you allow people to have a color chooser, they can basically choose any color combination that, that you, you might want, right? And that, that might break accessibility without them noticing, right? So if you provide something like that, you need at least an accessibility check that checks against the website that you're creating, right? Um, but that's pretty complex actually, right? And pretty labor intensive. You have to show that it that it works responsively uh, in, in res responsive web design, right? And that's quite hard these days, right? Even web developers fail to 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 check all the combinations, right? And those systems have means to like to uh, adjust, and you can have a look at that. But to be honest, you really need to be a web designer to do that right, right? So in the end, what you will do, no matter how smart you are you will tinker around, right? I will tinker around because I'm not a designer, I'm not a UX expert, um, and I don't, know, I, I don't uh, um, know everything about accessibility, right? So you will end up with a bad product actually, right? And 
the reason for that is that, that the modern web is quite hard, right? And quite challenging. Like back in the old days where it only had like text and a few images, that was easier, right? But the requirements in a modern web project is you need a consistent design, right? You usually have a corporate design manual. So you need a designer that, that makes the site looks, look good, right? But even designers are split these days, right? You have experts for UI and you have experts for user experience, right? And usually at Kit Concept, we have actually like both, right? Because there are different like uh, specialists for different things, right? You, so you want a, a system that's easy to use, right? For low training costs, that's really important for large organizations that need to train people for their systems, right? It needs to be accessible. I already mentioned that for legal requirements. It needs to be responsive. It needs to be secure. It needs to be fast, right? So that all leads to a situation where a modern web project from a in a decent size is actually a team sport, right? It's not something that, is, that a single person can do, like back in the days when we had, when, in, when CMSs were introduced. Um, so Plone 6 is not a classic CMS because it's not stuck in the past any longer with an outdated tech stack. We rebuilt it from the scratch with a super modern um, uh, state-of-the-art tech step, right? But it's also not a website builder like WordPress, right? It's not a tool for agency that want to introduce a new bottleneck and where you have to go uh, to, uh, to an agency to change stuff on your website, right? Or where you will end up with like a, an, uh, an ugly or an inaccessible website um, when regular users uh, are using it. Clone 6 will be a modern state-of-the-art CMS solution with a modernized technology stack with a loosely coupled front-end and back-end system and it's actually, as far as I know, the first enterprise CMS that does that step, right? That provides both power and ease of use. So how did we get there? Um, so I already mentioned like user-centric design, right? Albert Casado, the, uh, the designer who was responsible for the Clone 5 Barcelona theme, he came up with a, with a brand new UI framework when we were um, developing or starting to develop um, the new, new stack, right? And he uh, and this new Pazanaga UI or Quana UI now um, uh, focuses on simplicity and focus, right? Which are basically the principles of good UX. So you introduce focus by, uh, by removing uh, settings that are not the most um, important ones, right? So you set the focus on the most used actions for, for editors, right? And the idea of, of Pazanaga UI is that we focus on, on everyday editors, right? Because they're our main users, right? So what we did, for instance, with the, or was what Albert did with the sidebar is that he put there the three most frequently used um, uh, actions in Plone, right? Which is edit content, uh, uh, add content, and have a look at the structure, right? And everything else is hidden, right? This doesn't mean that, that Plone 6 don't have power user features, right? Power users are also, uh, are also important, but we hide that, right? Um, because we want to focus on simplicity. So let me show you how we um, solve the image handling problem in Plone 6 and what design choices we make, right? In Plone 6, and I will show you the details uh, uh, later, um, we have two settings for, for images. One setting is the alignment. You can set it to left, right, middle, and 100%. And the size, right? Like small, medium, and large. And that's actually 10 to 12 combinations, uh, depending on how you, how you count there. Um, and this is quite a bit. When we usually give a website to a designer and ask them to do all the variations, like 12 variations is quite a bit already for just images, right? And as an integrator company, you can always like add more if you have the feeling that you need them, right? But they should be part of like the, the design process, right? And you should think about carefully what you actually need. And Plone 6 is flexible enough to allow integrators to add more options if they need that, right? So we don't restrict that, but out of the box, we focus on simplicity and keep the system simple and user-friendly, that our users do not run into what I showed you with WordPress, right? That they're just lost. Um, so Plone 6 will support modern page layouts. Uh, and it's all about like blocks, 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 right? Um, I said that like last year at the conference already uh, and talked about that in depth. Um, and the, the core idea is that modern web layouts and landing pages are usually one column layouts, right? Driven by the mobile web and, and the, the need for responsive web design. So uh, yeah, no sidebar, no portlets, sorry, uh, but we will have a solution and a modern solution for portlets, right? So they won't go away, um, at least not fully go away. So, so let me show you a bit what, what I mean, right? I just took randomly like three, 
three uh, random designs from the internet uh, to show you um, like roughly what, what, what kind of like website I have in mind here. And this is one of these. This is the WordPress 2020 uh, default theme that they have. WordPress actually ships one new theme every year. That's also like pretty impressive. Um, and let us like go through that. So at the beginning, you have a, like a, a highlight block. Then you have uh, like a few like what we call grid blocks. You have another highlight block, a quote block, uh, a call to action block, and another grid block, right? So we at at Kit Concept we haven't we haven't we have an intern um, that started like last month, and he started basically from zero. Like he had no previous experience with with web design actually, and. Uh, we gave him the assignment uh, to, to recreate the 2020 theme uh, on Plone, right? Because the 2020 theme is, is GPL, it's open source, you, so you can grab it, right? But he, like, like the, the challenge was to like start from the scratch and write a CMS and also create the blocks that, are, that might not be there, right? Or reuse the blocks that we already had. And um, I would like to show you, um, show you the results. So I think he did a fantastic job there, but I mean, the, the thing is that's not a like like a perfect theme right but this is something that an intern did in like a few weeks right from zero and you see here that we have to actually the same blocks and on the left side you see that's actually a plone side so you can go to edit here and you can actually like edit that right so this this was just like a showcase to show that we can easily do modern designs that 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 wordpress does right there's no no functionality missing right of course wordpress has like 60,000 add-ons i think or something and we're not there yet of course but still we can do it right it's doable and it's not hard right an intern did that um so you don't need to 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 be like a, a website pro with 20 years of of experience and let me show you in more detail um how this works so in plant six you can build sophisticated uh, landing pages and layout and that's based on 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 grid layouts right so we have this grid block and actually this is the the block that we put a tremendous amount of work or victor put a tre tremendous amount of work i think it's it was like we had three or four implementations and we start from scratch over and over again because we weren't happy with with what we had tiberio also helped us with that with the with the infrastructure um uh and um uh yeah, let me show you how this how this looks like. So this is this is like a, a, the grid system. You have, can have between one and four uh, elements in a grid, but that's also flexible. You can you can change that. You can have six or one hundred if you want. Those are like text uh, grids. Those are image grids, right? This is roughly how it looks like, right? And this is not like yeah, a beautifully designed uh, overview page, but just to showcase like what what you can do, right? So let me show how the editing works. So when you create uh, one of those grid pages from scratch, right? So you choose here a grid block, then you can choose uh, the number of columns that you, that you might want. And then you can freely choose the sub blocks that you have here. Right, right now we have image listing, uh, teaser and text, right? We'll go with, with, with image first. Uh, so we choose an image and in, when you have an image block in Plone 6, you can choose if you want to upload uh, a new image or if you want to choose an existing one. If you choose an ex existing one on the right side, uh, a nice um, content chooser shows up. You can then like drag and drop the, um, the, the, the blocks. You can add a new block. So the initial uh, choice that you make is not, not, not fixed, right? So you can delete blocks. You can add blocks if you want. Um, and um, you can also mix uh, mix uh, blocks here if you want, right? So I create a, a two column layout here, and here I I, I I add text, right? What you saw all earlier in the uh, in the uh, uh, in the in the scroll, uh, all the combinations that you that you have here, right? And you can basically like allow all sub blocks that you want here, right? But we choose only to have the ones that make sense because you usually don't want an image gallery or like a highlight slider that's full width in your sub block, right? So not all blocks make sense here. Uh, one other really important uh, block, in my opinion, that Plone 6 uh, will ship with is a teaser block, right? A teaser is usually uh, used to create landing pages. So that comes from, from new sites. Usually you have an existing uh, um, article, for instance, and on the overview page, you just teaser the, 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 the articles, right? Uh, and the content is already uh, already in place. So let me show you how that, that looks like. So you create a new uh, teaser grid page. 
uh, same as before. Um, you create a grid, uh, you choose the columns, and then you choose not an image, but a teaser. You can, of course, when you have a teaser, you're choosing an existing content object, right? But now when you choose an existing content object, it will actually fetch not only the image, but also the title and the description, right? You can do the same thing what I showed before. Um, you can move them around, but you can also override everything that you see here, right? So you, you get the title out of the box, like when you, when you choose that, but you can override the title. You can override the description. You can even override the image, right? The reasoning behind that is that dependent on the context, you might want different, different ways of teasering something, right? You can't assume that you have, a, you have an element and that's teaser in the same way on all sub pages, right? Because maybe like one department uses that in one way, the other department uses that in another way. So you need a way uh, to override that, right? So this is uh, what the teaser block is. And in combination with the grid block, it really allows you to, to create very nice landing pages. Clone 6 will, will ship with, with, with a few like default blocks. I won't show them in detail. It's, it's basically the, uh, the, the basics that we have in Clone 5 already. So we have a text block, an image block. We have a video block that supports YouTube and Vimeo and, and MP4. We have a listing block, which is basically collections in a block uh, that allows you to create listings. We have a table block, table of contents, a hero block, and a maps block for Google Maps. Um, but I would like to focus on the more fancy uh, and advanced blocks here. We almost have 100 add-ons for Plone uh, for for Plone 6 on on npm, right? So let me show you like a a small number of the blocks that we have. So oh, that was too quick. So this is a a, a slider block, right? Um, that we have. This is a carousel block, and they're actually from the structure quite similar, right? They they only differ in the way that that they um, that they display um, the, the information because they're all based on, on the idea of teasers. So let me show you how this, this block works. So we have an existing block, right? You go to, to edit, and then you see on the right side, like a number of teaser elements, basically, right? You can add a new teaser element. It works exactly the same as what I showed you before. You choose an existing teaser, you fetch that, and the block will automatically fetch the image, the title, and the description, right? You can drag and drop that. You can move that around. Um, you can overwrite uh, the image, the title, and the, the, the text. Um, and you can as well uh, like change some settings uh, below in the, in the right column, right? The number of, of elements that you have there. Um, so the blocks all work the same, right? So, so users get used to the way um, they're, they're operate. So they only have to learn uh, certain patterns once, and we're reusing that patterns, right? Uh, and those patterns are already like in, 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 in Volto Core. So let me show you another block that's uh, from the EEA, from the European Environmental uh, Agency, uh, and from all the web, uh, which is working for them. Um, and they open source that. They actually open source everything they do. Um, and uh, Nilesh, Alan, and Tiberio uh, worked on that. And it already has contribution from Julia, Victor, David, and Alex. So like lots of other companies are already using that. And that's really great to see that that individuals and, and companies open source blocks and then you see interaction on that right away and you get like QA and, and, and improvements uh, um, uh, right away. Um, so uh, that's, a, that's an accordion. I think that's, that's nothing new really. So you can open and close the panes, uh, but I would like to show you how the editing works, right? So one cool thing is that the editing that, that, uh, that is fully operational in edit mode, right? So you have you here have like the same thing that you had in the carousel and the slider block. So you can add new elements. But the new thing here is so I add a new new pane here uh, with text. But the new thing here is that you can add an arbitrary block here, right? So you can have those um, those accordion elements, and you can add like text to one. You can add a, a teaser grid block to the other, and a listing to the third, right? So you have all the flexibility that you can imagine. Uh, with the with the block system, and no matter which blocks you have, you can add them here, right? Same with the with the grid block, right? This gives us the flexibility in the end for the integrators that so they can freely like put together stuff dependent on the needs for um, for the client. Um, another contribution um, by EA um, is the the new search block that would ship with with Plone Six. I, I guess you all know the the faceted navigation. Um, add-on for Plone. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the most popular add-ons that are there. And with Plone 6, we will ship that by default as a block. 
Um, that was contributed by, by Tiberio, Christina, and, and Victor. Um, and let me show you how that works. So, oops. I think I mixed things here. <laughs> One sec. Okay, that's the wrong. Form. Okay, give me a sec. Crap. <laughs> okay, I will show that later when I have time. Okay, the search box is really amazing, but I uploaded the wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong video. Um, my my keynote crashed. Sorry for that. Okay, so I will do that at the end, uh, and I will do that live. So um, next thing, uh, next popular add-on is is forms, right? You all know Plone Form Gen and Easy Form. It's one of the most used add-on in, in in the Plone world. Nicola and Julia from from Red Red Turtle. Uh, worked on a uh, on an add-on product that that does exactly that, right? Alok from Kit Concept and Janina from Workbank also work on different implementations, and that happens every now and then that we like try out different things how they should work, right? And then at the end, like things come together. But Plone Six will ship with a with a with a forms framework or as or with an add-on, right? So let me show you how this works. Um, so you you create a new contact form, for instance, right? So let's keep it simple here. Um, because I want to show you like many things, right? So you create a new form here. The form is a block. Everything in Plone 6 is actually a block, right? Um, so you have a few settings there. This, this is basically like the email that is sent, to whom it's sent, like what subject you use and all those like kind of information. Here you see what kind of like uh, fields you have. So basically the fields that you have in Plone Form Gen as well. So text, email, uh, whatnot. And we're creating a simple form here. So we are creating a subjects field, which is a text field and uh, um, um, uh, uh, a text field uh, for, the, for the message actually, right? So you can add an arbitrary amount of, of, um, of fields. And the cool thing here is that because that thing is a block, you can freely, sorry, you can freely combine that with other elements, right? One recurrent problem in the classic clone uh, setup was always that clients were asking, hey, we want something on the contact form, right? We want a more elaborate contact form. And then you can either like have text fields in, in your form content type, and that's not as flexible as you want, um, or you have to build something that the client can't really edit, right? And now with the new block space form, you can just combine that wherever you want, right? You can even have multiple, multiple forms on one page, right? And that's the kind of flexibility that we never had before. Um, so that's really that really shows the power of blocks, in my opinion. Um, another thing from from the EA and and something that Alan built, um, and this has no content. Con I call them no content, uh, no code content types, uh, and that's that fulfills actually a promise that we made or tried long time ago. Asco worked quite a bit on on finishing the the story that you can create um, add-on products and content through the web, and also templates, right? But the missing part were always the templates that we have, right? So we had lots of flexibility. There was always a cool feature of Plone that you can create content types through the web, but the missing piece was always templates, right? But not any longer. So let me show you how this works now. So you go like in, in Plone 5, you go to the site setup, you choose the de dexterity content types, it lists the dexterity content types and you create a new type, right? So that's, that's nothing new. We had that in Plone, Plone, uh, Plone 5, even in Plone 4 with dexterity. Um, but then you can go to the, um, to, the, to the layout template, right? You have to enable the editable blocks here, but then you basically are in a template mode. So you can create a template here. So you can override the, the, the title, for instance, and create a helper here. So we create the book content type and uh, the book has a title, of course. and um, Yeah. <laughs> the book has a title, of course, and it has a, um, uh, an introduction, right? Should, be, uh, should have an introduction here. And this should be a required field that should always be there, right? So we require the, 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 the users to have, have that field. Um, and we also make it so that it, that it can't move, right? Because sometimes you have blocks that can't move. And the next thing is, is an image then, right? So we want to have the cover of the, of the book that, that we're talking about there and should also be fixed, right? So you give, give that page like a structure. Think about like, like events or news items, right? They're just 
in the end templates, right? Because a news item is not different from a page actually, except that it has a lead image, right? And you can easily like create that within five minutes uh, with that system. So you, you store the template, then you have the, the new content types, you create a new book, and then you have the template here, right? So you give your users like a helper to, to, to make it easy to have um, um, content objects that are, that, are, that are reusable basically, right? Uh, and that's that's a pretty cool feature. Um, so, uh, as said, Clone 6 will be all about blocks, right? We have plenty of blocks, and I could only show you like a few things, right? More than 100 add-ons, uh, almost 100 add-ons on, on, on NPM. And we plan to open source lots of like new blocks in the next um, next uh, weeks and months to come. We gathered here in Zorento to, to discuss actually which blocks we want to have in core, for instance, or which blocks we might put to like a collective. Uh, and uh, how Clone, is, Clone 6 is, is going to, 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 um, to, in what shape Clone 6 will be in, in, in the details. But there are plenty of blocks around already today. So Clone 6 is really ready for prime time. We shipped the first website with the, with the, with the stack that will power Clone 6 in 2090. Um, and Volto, the new front end and this, this stack is used in production since then. So let me show you like just a few examples, right? One of the highest profile government websites in Germany is actually running on Clone 6 these days. Um, multiple universities in the US, in Europe, and in Japan already today use Clone 6. Uh, the Humboldt University Berlin has two websites. The University of Minnesota has a website. There are plenty of websites uh, in Japan that are powered by Clone 6 today. Um, one example here is Osaka University. It's, it's, one of, it's considered to be one of the top three universities in Japan. It's, kind of an Ivy League type university there. And their main public website now runs on Clone 6, thanks to CMS.com and, and Manabu. So let me show you that, that you, that you also see like what, what Clone 6 can do, right? In terms of like the layout, right? You can see here that it has blocks. I mean, you can't really tell that it's a Clone 6 site, which is, I think, a good thing in my opinion. It, it just has a really modern blocks-based layout, right? It could, could have been like a WordPress site, right? You don't see that from the outside. You have no clue, but Clone 6 can do that. And it's really an, an impressive website, I think. Um, Clone 6 already powers internet solutions with, with almost 7K uh, users, right? One of the largest research institutions in Europe um, is using the internet for Plone. Let me, let me quickly show you how the, how the front page looks, right? So we have a, an introduction um, slider, we have like events, then we have a highlight block, grids block, uh, we have listing grids block, uh, grid blocks that's a one-off and the, the last two are, are special blocks for the for this client right um and soon this uh this uh this research institution uh we will we're currently working on their public website and early next year we will publish that and it will be like a, a huge website with one and what more than 100 subsites for institutes and projects um and there are more, more projects uh, in the pipeline, actually. Um, sorry. Uh, I messed that up. <laughs> Maybe now it's time to dance after all. <laughs> but but you, can, you can watch the site again, right? It, it looks really nice. Um, yeah, and that one as well, keynote won't allow you to skip the animations. Um, okay, the next, next website that I will show you comes from the European Environmental Agency, right? As I said, they're, they're heavily contributing to, to, to open source and to, um, to Volto Core EA is, is working, uh, or the web is working for them. Um, they, they publish like multi-billion euro contracts in the, in the past like uh, years and um, luckily for us, they, uh, they were given to companies that are heavily invested into the, into the Plone community, uh, all the web and code syntax and others, right? Um, and they're open sourcing everything, right? So that's really a great contribution. Uh, and lots of websites uh, are powered by that. Um, so all the web built the forest information system website of uh, forest information system for Euro website. Um, it has beautiful data-driven blocks to visualize data. And that also really shows the power of, of a modern uh, React framework, uh, framework that you can use all those like fancy libraries. And 
the cool thing about this is that the blocks are all uh, data driven by by remote data right so you can fetch the data and show it um, and, it's, and it's really amazing what what they did right and it's all open source so you can check it out um, yesterday Piero, Piero gave a talk um, about how, how red turtle uh, build a solution for municipalities in Italy right uh, this is the public website of Moderna that he showed yesterday and they have 20 websites in production and 50 more to come, right? So they really built a, 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 a very impressive um, solution here. You can see here like video blocks, grid blocks, uh, and you see the recurring theme, right? Um, so I talked a bit about like that we're using the Plone 6 stack like today, right? So what I mean with the Plone 6 stack is that today you can use like Plone 5.2, which is battle tested and ultra stable. You can use Plone REST API, which is in core since version five, and you can use the Volto front end, which is used in production since 2090, right? So you can start a new Plone 6 ish project like today. There's no reason to wait, right? We will all, we're all looking forward to Plone 6 to have it, right? The new big release, but the stack is already there and it's, and it's stable, right? And this is something that we never had before, as far as I know, right? We usually put out an alpha version and then you had to like, wait a bit and go through that you can start with that today right you can also like use plone 6 alpha if you want right but you can also stay with plone 5.2 and then switch later right so you have all the options dependent on how how much you are involved and, and how much risk you want to take right and plone 6 is also here to stay the plone release and security team decided that plone 6 will get full support of five years to come after the release right Plone always supported versions way longer than most other systems that are out there, right? Drupal and other systems, like take a look at Python. Python has three years, uh, Node also three years for their major version that, uh, of, of, of years that they support this version, right? And then end of life happens. Plone 3 was supported four years. Plone 4 was supported 10 years. And Plone 5 so far is supported six years, right? So we did a pretty good job in the past but we kind of fail to advertise that properly. And, but this time we will improve that and we will make the promise to, to all users and to the community that Plone 6 will be supported at least five years, most likely longer. When you're not ready yet, right? For whatever reason, for Plone 6, no problem. We also got your back, right? Plone 6 will ship with what we call classic UI. It's a modernized version of the Plone 6 user interface that you're used to, right? Together with the LTS, uh, the LTS that I also talked about, this will give you five more years to pick up the new front end and, and to adapt, right? To see if that works for you. And we know that we have like large institutions that heavily invested into Plone, that invested lots of money into Plone that just need more time, right? Universities are a good, good example. They, they can't just like, because of their size and their infrastructure, they can't just jump on something new uh, right away, right? So we got your back. You will have five years to adapt and there's no need to rush, right? But I hope that today I showed you why it's worth to actually move to Plone 6, right? So let's wrap that up. Plone 6 will be the first enterprise CMS that combines the power features and stability of, an enter of what enterprise users need with the ease of use of a very simple system, right? Plone 6 will be a perfect fit for large institutions that build internet sites and intranet solutions with lots of editors, right? Where training costs are, are important. They need a system that's easy to use that, so they don't have to put lots of effort and money into training costs, right? They need a solution that is scalable and that, that works within the existing enterprise infrastructure like LDAP and, and authentication and lots of other things, right? Steffen will, will give a talk after mine um, about a client project that we did for Helmholtz and show you how, how we integrate that, right? And that's, that's a big asset of Plone that, that new systems on the market do not have, right? There are plenty of systems that, that are like new and that, are, that use a, a pretty uh, a decent and, and modern stack, right? But they lack the stability that, that we have, right? And Plone 6 will combine the power and the flexibility that we need and the control that we also need, right? And I sincerely believe that with Plone 6, we have a very bright future ahead because we're giving something to the open source world or the IT world that's not there yet, right? Plone 6 will provide something really unique. Thank you.
Hey, Timo, thank you so much for that keynote. It's really great to see it. To show the search block? Yeah, you still have five minutes. Okay. Uh, we are not hearing uh, Andy, so yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let me quickly do that. Uh... There you go. That's the search page. You choose a search block and it will list um, all elements on the website. On the right side, you see like criteria. When you're used to Plone 5, think about a collection uh, that's a block actually. So you can um, add filters there that you want to, for instance, only have the example pages and it will list the stuff and you can search there, right? But in addition, you can add search facets here, as many as you want. So let's add a type facet, for instance, right? So you can choose the content type. You can choose the appearance of it if you want a checkbox or a select field. Uh, and you can also add a label. You can also add a, a second facet, like say the tag, right? Subjects field uh, or keywords. Uh, let's choose a different uh, 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 widget. Let's choose checkboxes, right? And then you can even choose if you have multiple choice or single choice, and it will adapt uh, and show radio buttons or checkboxes, which are the right controls for that. You also have a few advanced, uh, advanced options. So you can choose if you want to show a, so a sorting option. You can put a label on the sorting option. You can even restrict the sort options that will show there. You see here all the options that you have to sort something in Plon from the, that comes from the collections, right? Usually you don't want to expose that kind of power to your end users. You want to expose that to your editors, but not to your end users. So you can, can restrict that here. You can decide if you want to show a search button or if you want to have an auto search, right? And you can also uh, choose um, variations. So you can choose if you want to have the facet on the right side, on the left side. Um, and that's all configurable. As an integrator, you can also remove those settings, right? You can also uh, uh, change the results template, right? Um, so you have the, the, the summary view. You can even have an image gallery there. Um, and then you can save. And then you have a really powerful faceted search user interface, right? No Solon, no Elasticsearch, just based on the Z catalog. So you can search. You can sort on, diff on, the, on the two settings that are set. You can like reverse the sort here. Here you can choose the, uh, the, the, the content type um, that you want to choose, right? Uh, you can clear the filters um, if you uh, if you if you if you made a mistake or want to go back. Um, and below that, you can choose the um, the, uh, the 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 tags right that you have. So you have a really really powerful um, uh, search interface here um, that you usually back in the past you have to put lots of effort into that, and that comes by default uh, with Clone Six Core. Thanks. Timo, thank you. That was fantastic. Plone 6 looks to be completely amazing. You guys have put in a lot of work and I think the community is really appreciative of everything that you've done. And I'm just, I'm actually pretty blown away by how amazing Plone 6 is. So thank you very much.